Okay, welcome back. Welcome to the second lecture on chapter four. In this lecture, we'll complete the uh, lesson for chapter four by covering the remaining pages in the book. Those are pages 13 through 21. So let's talk about questions that involve the Pythagorean theorem where the triangle is not given. So last time I showed you examples for the most part where the triangle was pretty obvious, it was either just given to you, or you had to infer something very minor from the diagram. Perhaps uh, the last question we covered was a little bit tricky, but maybe uh, if we could organize some of the tricks, so to speak, into rules or patterns, it might make your life a little bit easier. So that's what I talk about now in terms of how you would actually figure out where a useful triangle could be located in terms of the application questions you're going to see. So here are five helpful rules that I have come up with in the notes and hopefully we can use these in some way to guide you through some of the more difficult questions. Firstly, if there is a circle or an arc thereof in a question, the center of the circle is important in the question that you're going to investigate. This is very common, for example, in architecture questions and also questions in uh, mechanical engineering as well. But in construction in general, you do see circles on blueprints, so be prepared to um, consider the center of the circle as being important at the problem that you're solving or in the problem you're solving. Also, if it is not a complete circle, but rather an arc of a circle, the endpoints of that arc would be important as well. So one thing you'll find very common in construction is symmetry. And if you do see questions that involve symmetry, you should try to divide and conquer. That is, look at half the picture or even a quarter of the picture in the situation where that be, would be warranted. Finally, we have a couple more rules involving how circles uh, connect and blend with each other. So in these two diagrams here, you'll see that there are two circles and one is where they are ex externally tangent. So they are touching on the outside and here they are internally tangent where they are touching on the inside. I should mention here that this tangent line right here, we call that a tangent line, is always 90 degrees with the radius. So in this case, if you could envision drawing a right angle triangle like this, and in this case, perhaps a triangle like this, or even one like this, depending on the context of the question. And what you'll see with the examples that I'm going to cover, we're gonna employ all of these rules. So one last one here, and that's with blended arcs. Um, this one here is more uh, when you want to really produce nice drawings and blueprints. And if you're wondering ever how, how you might get the shape of an S curve, for example, it's the shape of a road or a blueprint of some sort. So in, in those situations, blended arcs can be modeled by intersecting arcs of circles, as you can see here. So if we extend here, we can visualize that there are arcs of circles that are touching or tangent to each other. What I'd like to do in the next series of examples is cover uh, questions that use maybe one, two, three, or even four of the rules that I've discussed up to this point. So here is the first example in the notes uh, that I'm going to cover. What you'll see is that at the very bottom, I've indicated a page reference. Also, I've put the final answer as per the notes so that you can try the question and pause the video, and then you can see the solution that I present after. In any case, the general theme that you're going to have with the questions that I'm showing you is that where is the right angle triangle? You need to find that right angle triangle. And uh, that's what makes these questions a bit tougher compared to the ones we covered last time. So let's get going on this question. Here we have the diagram abstract of the uh, wording of the question. And we can just talk about how we would work through the question when no triangle is given. So remember some of those rules. I'm not gonna list them by uh, number, but we'll just point them out as they are necessary. One of the rules that I mentioned was that if there's symmetry in the question, 
you should take advantage of it. So for example, I can draw a vertical right down the middle of this diagram due to symmetry. And we can work with half the question. So imagine that I just erase that part of the question. Now, there are some values there, so let's just bring that back. One other thing you notice is that there is an arc of a circle. This shape right here is an arc of a circle. So the endpoints of the arc of a circle are important. So these two points are important. Finally, the center of the circle right here is also important. Perhaps with this information, do you see a triangle that will emerge from this figure? Right here. Let's draw that in a nice color here, nice blue. There's the triangle. So that's your right angle triangle that we can use to solve this question. So I'll just draw it here on the side again. And hopefully we can get some numbers on that figure. Remember, the end game here is to find the height of this apparatus. So, we already know that this length down here is one inch from here to here. If we can find the height of this right angle triangle, I'll call that here x for example, then I think we achieve the goal of finding the overall height. So, how long is this length here? Well, it is also a radius of a circle. So when you see questions involving arcs of circles or, or full circles, remember that the radius is a number that will appear most likely in your right angle triangle. And further on that point, it will probably end up being the hypotenuse of the triangle. That is the longest side here opposite the right angle. What's this distance here? Well, that is 3 quarters divided by 2. So 3 quarters divided by 2, well, that's 3 eighths and hopefully you know 3 eighths if you don't it's 0.375 inches and that's it so if we can use the Pythagorean theorem now to solve for X this question is basically done so what I'm gonna do now is write down the Pythagorean theorem and use the idea from what I said last time that is the longest side on this triangle should go by itself which in this case the longest side length is 1 inch so just remember to put the one by itself. So x squared plus that, that 3 eighths, is equal to one squared. And you can move stuff around and solve. So that's one squared minus 0 0.375 squared. Yes, one squared is one, but the reason I write the squared there is so that you can have a visual pattern that you can refer to for tougher questions. When you evaluate this on your calculator, when I did it earlier, I got 0 0.927 inches. And that leads us to the final step, which is the height. So the height is just 1 plus the x that we just got. So if we plug in this number right here for x, my arrow got a little bit messy at the end, h is 1.927 inches as per the requirements of the question we have solved for H. We can move on to the next example. Here's the next question. I've chosen this question from page 18. Um, my intention is not to do every single exercise in the book. I'd like you to try them on your own, but I promise you that there, if there is significant feedback about certain questions and how to solve them, I will post complete solutions for those questions on Blackboard but I'll probably package them all together at the end of the chapter instead of uh, posting them one at a time. So, here we go. We have this time a plug that is supporting the following situation here. Imagine that maybe this is a container full of fluid and uh, it's a cross section, maybe like a channel of some sort. And we're looking to find the width of this uh, apparatus, so to speak. Now, the thing is, this question, I've put this type of question on tests in the past, and usually uh, the uh, issue is where the right angle triangle is, and I'll show you the most common mistake that's made. Usually people will be compelled to draw the triangle all the way down like that. And that's not how you're gonna solve this question, because if you were to extend the triangle all the way, the length that I'm drawing here is actually not very easy to obtain, and is not very helpful to the solution so or helpful in finding the solution 
So let's work through the diagram. Of course, you can pause the video at this point and try it on your own. So here's just a magnified version of this diagram. And what you have is really two circles or, sex, uh, or arcs thereof that are touching. See, we have this little circle here, and we have this arc of a circle here. Now, the, uh, the larger arc does touch the circle, and the tangency, uh, point of tangency is right there. If we were to draw a straight line from here to here, now that's going to be an issue, but I might get the drawing tool out. There it is. That straight line is going to be the combined length of the two radii of the circle. So this line that I've drawn here is 10 inches plus whatever the radius is of this little plug. Well, this plug is half inch diameter, so that means its radius is half inches. So the length of this uh, line here is 10.5 when you put them together, inches. The issue though still is where is the triangle? Now, that's a key pattern that I picked out based on the rules. Notice here though that you may be compelled, just you have to do this length for some reason initially in your diagram. But in reality, it's actually better to take an indirect path to the answer. That is, just draw a horizontal line from the center of the smaller circle here to the line of uh, vertical line of symmetry of the uh, larger arc. Now, this will form a right angle triangle. There it is. And that is the triangle for this question. Slightly different than what you may have uh, thought would have been the case, but in any case, we have information to solve for W. What I'm going to do, though, is give this length here of the base of the triangle a name. I'm going to call it X. Take a moment and think about what the height of that triangle is and how it is related, for example, to the radii of the two arcs or circles. So I know that from, from B here to the bottom, it's 10. So it's going to be 10 inches, but we have to take away something. And I'll indicate that in blue. We have to take away this much. How much is that length worth? Well, I'll just copy it over here. It's half an inch. It's the radius of the little circle. So it's 10 minus 0.5. And let's put some inches there. So the height of this triangle is 9.5 inches. Again, what may appear to be a complicated diagram ended up resulting in a single triangle. What you'll find for the majority of questions that you encounter in this unit is, is that it comes down to a single triangle, or at worst, two triangles. Let's take uh, this triangle here and apply the Pythagorean theorem. So what I'll do is I'll just circle the lengths right here. There's 10 and a half, 9 and a half inches respectively, and an X. Which of those three lengths is the longest side of the triangle? Well, it represents the longest side over here. It's, it's 10.5 inches. So we know that that longest side length has to go by itself. So when, when we write the Pythagorean theorem, make sure that you put the 10 and a half by itself. And we can solve now for x by rearranging and taking the square root. So what you might see me do maybe in the next few examples is just jump to this step right here. But we're still in the beginnings of the course and I don't mind taking the extra steps. So anyway, 10 and a half squared minus nine and a half squared works out really nicely. It's actually uh, 20. The square root of 20 to three decimal places is, uh, places is 4.472 inches. So that leads us to our final step, which is W. So what does W equal? That's not a nice looking square, rectangle, sorry, there we go. Well, W is going to be the following. W will equal X plus 0 0.5. Because W is the length X, but you have to add this little bit here at the end, which is half an inch representing the radius. So that's a very easy mental math exercise. 4.972 inches is the final answer. Here is the next example we have two rollers that are resting on a horizontal surface. 
and the objective is to find the horizontal distance between the contact points of the two circles. Now you can also say the horizontal distance between the two centers of the circle, circles. So how would you approach this question? And how would those five rules that I indicated earlier relate? You can pause or you can keep on going because the final answer is right there. Okay, let's try this out. So I've just taken the figure again and uh, magnified it a little bit. The objective here somehow is to find a right angle triangle that will get us to that length D. So if you think back to the rules, one of the rules says that if you have two circles that are externally tangent, that you should connect their centers and their centers will form a straight line. So that is part of the triangle. And since we want the actual distance D, we could actually incorporate that into our triangle. So by just drawing this vertical leg here, we have it. That is the triangle that would probably get us to the answer. So I'm gonna call this here D, but the issue is, what are these lengths? Well, these lengths are related to the radii of the circles. So what I'm gonna do now is just draw the triangle nice and big here, and we'll start getting details about that triangle by doing some calculations. Firstly, what is the radius of this circle? I'm going to just call that R2. You don't have to give it a name, but just to be clear, that's one radius. If you take uh, 1.880 and divide by 2, you get 0 0.940, and that's in inches. And 3 quarters divided by 2 is 3 eighths. Now, 3 eighths we saw earlier already, so that's 0 0.375 inches. So, Referring to the quantities R1 and R2, this length here is actually R1 plus R2. And we can calculate that. So R1 plus R2 is 1.315. And that's in inches. And I'll just put that here as well, 1.315. Finally, the height here is going to be related to the radii. Well, I know that the total distance from top to bottom here, that distance is going to be R2, which is 0 0.940. But I also know this little distance here is R1. So this distance here is R2 minus R1. And that's the key to evaluating that height. So R2 minus R1 is 0 0.565. Really, it comes down to getting this triangle, because once you have this triangle, everything else is Pythagorean theorem. So what is the longest side on this triangle? It's the 1.315 inches, which, of course, I mentioned earlier, was related to the sum of the radii. So if we write that quantity by itself, we could write the Pythagorean theorem that way. But I am going to take a shortcut this time and just write D here. So the shortcut that I like to use is I'll write the square root and I'll write the bigger number, which is 1.315 squared and the smaller number, which is 0 0.565 squared. So the shortcut I offer you is that if D is the longest side, you put a plus sign. And if D is not the longest side, the unknown, then you put a minus sign because you would have to subtract anyway. We saw the subtraction pattern in the previous two examples. So I'll take advantage of that pattern here as well. If we evaluate this, we end up getting 1.187 inches, which is the final answer for the distance between the two points of contact between the circular rollers and the horizontal surface. Okay, on to a more interesting example, perhaps a more, bit more challenging example. But let's see if those rules that we've been talking about so far today are related to this question and how they actually can help us. We have three rollers in this case and the idea is to find the overall height of this uh, setup. Now perhaps uh, we can ex explore using more of the rules than we did in the previous one because in the previous one we just touched the centers of two circles and formed the hypotenuse of a triangle. In this case notice that there is a line of symmetry in the question. So we can cut the question in half and, uh, so to speak, divide and conquer. And that's what we're going to do. 
So here's the diagram again, nice and uh, magnified. Let's draw that line of symmetry with my very steady hand, as you can see. And uh, we want to connect the centers of the circles. So I want you to imagine that half this diagram is basically just not important anymore. I'll leave it scribbled out like that. That's fine. So in any case, uh, there is the triangle that we're trying to use to get to something useful, which is the height H. So let's imagine going on a little journey here. We need this height here. Okay, that number is pretty easy to get. We'll get that eventually. And we also need this height here, which is pretty easy. But finally, indicated in red here, we need that height as well. I like to give that height an, uh, a variable, a name. I'm going to call that height x. So you can see that here, x. So if we kind of look at the final steps of the question, we can say that h equals something plus something plus x. So that's kind of like the last step of the question. Sometimes I like to do that because it's just nice to see the big picture. So these two blanks that I've written are represented by these two heights here, which uh, we can calculate them quite quickly. Uh, half of five centimeters is two and a half centimeters. So this is 2.5 and this is 10, half of 10 is five, so we have a five. So right now we know that the overall height of the apparatus is five, two and a half and X. Or in other words, 7.5 plus X. I'll just put a blank there and deal with it later. In fact, I'm going to get a little bit uh, enthusiastic and already put the answer in a box. Because once we get X, we're home free. So let's draw the triangle here from the figure, nice and big, and work our way to that answer. So we're trying to find X. What's this length and what's that length? Well, this length here, the hypotenuse, is this plus this. And, and those are the two radii. That's five and that's two and a half. So if we put that together, that's seven and a half centimeters. And over here, the base of the triangle, well, that's just five because it's the same as the radius I've indicated over here in blue. So that's your triangle. Well, is X the longest side? No. So, when we write down the Pythagorean theorem, as I have already rearranged it for us, you would have a minus sign. And you could evaluate that on your calculator to get 5.590, which is the quantity that I can put here. So, when you simplify all of that, and to the prescribed accuracy of the question, that comes out to 13.09 centimeters. Once you did do one of these types of questions with uh, circles that are tangent to each other, ramping it up a little bit is not the issue because the pattern ends up being uh, very familiar in the long run. Okay, here is a big one. This is probably the question that I would call a chapter problem, so to speak, because this question incorporates many of the rules that I presented at the beginning of this presentation. So the objective is to find the base width of this apparatus. And that doesn't look very appealing in terms of uh, potentially uh, work. Some people when they see this question, I remember in lecture, in person at least, uh, their faces begin to start to look a little bit uh, confused or intimidated. So let me say this. Try this one on your own. If you can do this question on your own, I would safely bet that you would really get a high mark in a test of uh, geometry, at least with me, and trigonometry. So anyway, the, uh, the process will begin. Once you are ready to go, I'm going to change the slides here. Anyway, uh, symmetry. So we want to find the length x here, but don't be distracted by that. Let's just try to chop up the figure with symmetry first. Now, how many lines of symmetry exist in this question? Or in other words, how many lines can I draw that would uh, divide the image evenly? So there's one, but there's also one down here, across this way, whoops. So we can actually look at one quarter of the problem. So what I'd like you to do is focus your attention, for example, 
to this top left quadrant of the diagram. What I'm going to make you do is draw a rectangle around that figure, like a picture frame. So well, let's take a look at that frame there and analyze and label it and do something useful. So there it is, nice and big. So right now we have the following diagram. I need to give some variables here. So I'm going to call this here Y and I'm going to call this here Z. And, and those lengths are from here to here and from here to here respectively. So this is probably the most complicated question you're going to see with me uh, today at least. So going back to the rules, we've used symmetry twice, but also we have arcs of a circle. See the circle here? So the endpoints of the arc of a circle are important. So this point here is super important. Finally, this point here, which is not really uh, clear to the diagram, is the center of curvature, or the center, if you like, of the circle. So I'm going to draw that point there. So ultimately, this length here, here, this length here, is the radius of the circle, which is 2.59 inches, as is this length here, which is also 2.59 inches. So what to do with the rest of the question? Well, ultimately, what are you trying to find? You're trying to find x. So x, x is down here. How the heck does x relate to this picture? You might take some time to think about this, but what I'll do is I'll draw this in blue here. x is basically whatever y is. We'll double that value. So if we double the value of y, we get the answer. So in terms of the question, right, I'll tuck it down here in the bottom x is equal to 2 times y, whatever that is. And in fact, I'll put a box around it because that's the last step of this process. So we need to somehow get to that point. So I propose the following. I think we should get z first, and then get y, and then get x. So we're going to go like that, but we need some more information. So perhaps do you see anything else that we can use in this diagram? Well, take a look here. This is 6.350 all the way across. So how much is this length? It should be half of that number. So what is half of 6.350? Well, let's just draw that length there. So that's 6.350 divided by 2, which is 3.175. And that's in inches. Furthermore, what's this height here? Well, that height there is half of 4.28. So half of 4.28 isn't too difficult to calculate. Let me just divide that by two right here. So that's 2.14 inches. That four is looking a little bit sad. Okay, so I'm gonna just write that over here. That's 2.14 inches. And there is your right angle triangle. Notice that the radius of the circle or arc of the circle in this case, also became the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. So hopefully you're starting to see that pattern. Okay, so we need to get uh, Z first. So we're gonna get Z by using the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle, which I'll call one. So step one, is Z the longest side on this triangle? No, the right angle is opposite to the 2.59 inches that means that Z is not. So when you write the Pythagorean theorem, Z will be 2.59 squared, that's the hypotenuse squared, minus 2.14 squared, all square rooted. Let's fix that four there, looking pretty gross. There you go. So if we solve for Z, we end up with 1.459 inches. That's step one. Now, step two. Step two is find y. So to get y, we can use the information here at the top and we can take uh, the overall length, which is 3.175 inches and subtract z. So y equals 3.175 inches minus z. So in this case, 
that's 3.175 inches minus 1.459 inches which gives us 1.716 inches and finally we can just substitute here let's call that step 3 and if you double that you get 3.432 that's a pretty easy one hopefully for mental math 3.432 inches and there you have it probably the most difficult answer I'll present uh, today this will be the last example that I go through with you in this presentation but by far not the last one that you should try I, I encourage you to try the uh, five or six that I didn't cover with you and uh, in any case let's get going on this it's a nice example and if uh, we were in the classroom environment I would probably make this one of your uh, quiz or assignment questions in the class it's a nice one because also it uses the rule that we haven't talked about yet which is blended arcs or blended curves so somehow we need to find the base length x here of this uh, shape and it is related somehow in calculations to the arcs of these two circles so let's take a look at the picture of course you can pause the video because the answer is right there and you can try that so here's the diagram again so the issue is how do we get a triangle out of this question well at some point the arcs will transition from one circle to the other what you can imagine though is that if I connect right across like that this blending we're assuming is connected right there and forms the straight line between the two centers of the circles so here's the first center of uh, the circular arc and here is the other center of the circular arc and this straight line distance is going to be 10 plus 18 so that's not a hard calculation hopefully we have here I was gonna box that 28 meters so you might see some interesting notation here by the uh, author of this uh, book that I'm using um, I have co-authored some of the notes but this particular one when you see the notation R like that it's not an exponent it's just referring to the radius you often see this notation in uh, machinery or in other types of uh, fields like tool and die so here we go we have a triangle if we can figure out the height of the triangle I mean we have the base as our variable I think I think we're good so I'm just gonna draw that triangle nice and generous over here and let's take a look here this is X this is 28 meters so the question is what is the height of this triangle well keep in mind that this over here is also 18 meters so this height over here is also 18 meters if I just cut through the other side length that's presented so if you do a little bit of a back and forth with addition and subtraction you should be able to find that height so what you can do is you can find this little little length here which uh, I don't need to give that a name right now what is that length equal to since the overall height is 18 if you take away 13.8 from 18 you get 4.2 and then once you have that 4.2 meters you can take the 10 and the 4.2 and you can add them together because this here is 10 from there to there and you get 14.2 and there you have it right angle triangle ready to go X is not the longest side so we can say that x is 28 squared minus 14.2 squared and if we square root that we end up with an answer of 24.13 meters so that's it for the questions that I'm going to cover with you hopefully uh, this lesson is not too taxing on you and when it comes to our, our learning experience, it's not about uh, quantity, it's quality. However, we will do videos in the future weeks where I do many more examples of a smaller uh, duration and maybe slightly easier nature. So for now, uh, we're just going for the quality. 
If you have any questions about the examples I haven't done with you, please let me know. Send me an email and I'll comprise or compile, sorry, a list or a summary of questions and solutions for those that we didn't cover here. So a couple of comments here on page 20, there's questions eight and nine. Just make sure that you take a look at them, but uh, don't focus too much on them because uh, those kinds of questions are just a, a bit more in the architecture realm. I don't want you to uh, stress too much about them. Uh, for those that are curious, I'll, I'm going to post. But like I said, don't worry too much about them. So with that in mind, week number two is done. What are you going to see from me now? Well, you'll be getting this video on Monday at some point. And uh, at that point also, I will post the assignment on Blackboard. Then... From Monday until Friday, you have time to work on the assignment. The assignment is one page long, and I'd like you to complete the assignment in the space of the page. If you need more space, you can definitely uh, attach a sheet. And then what you can do is email me the assignment by Friday at the prescribed, uh, due, by the, the prescribed due time. You can email me a picture. You can uh, find the easiest way that you want to send it to me. But the preferred uh, route of communication is email because in the past semester, it worked very well with my students in the degree program. So, thank you very much. Two down, four to go. Take it easy.